Hello. Oops. Hello, everyone. Donna Gray here, your Stamping Up demonstrator from the Northern Rivers area in Lismore. How are we all today? I hope you had a lovely weekend. Um, I have been a little bit busy. I um, had a lovely weekend. I hope you all had a lovely Mother's Day. Um, I had a beautiful Mother's Day. I spent the majority of my morning tidying up and getting all of my new coloured cardstock all out. And I've got all of my ink pads, all my brand new colours, ink pads, all sorted. So I had a lovely morning. Then I went and had lunch with my mother-in-law and my husband and my eldest daughter. My youngest was working. Um, and we had lunch downtown. Hey, Rita. Hey, Becca. Thanks for joining. Um, and then I spent a cruisy afternoon. I came home. I did a little bit of crafting. And then I had a nice little nana nap. And then we picked up our youngest from work. Hey, Karen. Thanks for joining. We picked up our youngest from work and then I went out to my mum and dad's and we had dinner out at mum and dad's for Mother's Day. So I hope you all had a lovely Mother's Day. Um, it was a beautiful day here in town, a little bit chilly, but um, no rain. So fingers crossed that stays that way. It's actually nice to have some sunshine. Starting to get on the cooler side though now. I'm starting to get out the jumpers and the jeans and starting to feel a little, little bit chilly. I'm sure there's other areas that are way more chilly than what um, what my area is. Hey Deborah, how are you going? Nice, thanks for joining. Okay, so I'm just going to get it up on my... Um, no, that's not it. Just going to get it up on my tablet so I can see comments as we go along. That looks like it's it. So, please feel free to jump on, say hello, let me know where you're watching from. I love chatting with people. I've got some fun crafting this afternoon. I'm actually going to use um, one of the new products, and it's, our, and it's coming out in our new catalogue. It's our Big Shot Embossing Mats. So I'm actually going to um, demonstrate how to use... Hey, Jessica, thanks for joining. Hey, Lyndall. You did your housework this morning so you could watch now. Well, it's nice to see you've got your priorities right, Lyndall. Awesome. Um, so, thank you all for joining. Please feel free to comment, ask questions as we go along. So I thought I would do um, a bit of a demonstration about how the Big Shot embossing mats work. And then I thought I would do... Um, hey, Margaret, thanks for joining. There's a new card out called the Impossible Card. So I decided that I might do one of those for you and show you how I made my template for my impossible card. And they're very, very easy. So for a, a thing called an impossible card, I have no idea why it's called an impossible card because it is fairly straightforward and fairly easy. Um, so bear with me today. I have a bit of a sore throat today. I've, I've been out and about and flat strap with my kids with sport and things and... Um, out in the cold weather and I think um, the cold weather's got to me so bear with me I will be sipping on coffee today to keep the um, the sore throat at bay chilly mornings in Redlands now yeah it's get, starting to get quite chilly I've got to head to Toowoomba on the weekend so I'm hoping it's not freezing cold up there hey Charlene thanks for joining um, okay so let's get to it so um, just a few little things, um, card kits, if you're in my stamps and card kit club, they have all been sent out, everyone should have received them by now, I think I've got one person that hasn't. Hey Audrey, thanks for joining and I did get your email um, about the stamps club, so um, I will send you an email out with all the details and payment details, thank you um, very much for joining um, and I hope you enjoy and get some inspiration. Um, it's cold up there too, Renee. Yeah, I, I think we're starting to get a bit of a taste of winter somehow. Okay, so um, I'm just going to show you a couple of things that I got in um, another order 
as I said, I forgot to order the framelits for um, one of my stamp sets, which I've actually done that now. I'm going to use them today. So I've got three cards for you today. So I thought, um, hey, Karen, thanks for joining. Um, so thank you, Margaret, for sharing. For everybody that shares my videos, and I will show you the stamp set that I'll be drawing at the end of the month. Everyone that shares my videos, if you live in Australia, you get an entry into the draw to win the Party Panda stamp set. I will be drawing that at the end of the month. Um, I've got lots and lots of entries into it, so thank you very much for everyone sharing my videos. You must type shared in the comments, please, so that I know that you've shared the video, okay? Um, but for everybody that shares my videos, it helps me get my crafting out there, it helps get more people to know what I do for a living um, and it helps me bring you more and more videos and gives me time to actually do these videos by you sharing um, and getting my crafting out there. What a wonderful job to do crafting all day every day. I absolutely love it. Thank you Becca for sharing. Toowoomba got around 17 on the weekend. Yes, I think Renee they said that it's supposed to be, my husband has looked at the forecast, it's supposed to be about 21. Thanks Karen for sharing. It's supposed to be about 21 degrees I think on Sunday when I'm going to be up there but we're driving up Saturday afternoon. The girls are going to play hockey here at 1.30 in the day and then we're driving up Saturday afternoon which is going to take me probably about three and a half to four hours and then we're going to be camping overnight in my Toyota Coaster bus our motorhome so but with no heating no no power no heating so I said to the girls get out the sleeping bags and the winter sheets and I think we should be right so uh, a bit warmer to uh, 20 today yeah so I think the days will be all right it's just the sleeping of a night time but it's only one night so I'm sure we will survive okay let's get to crafting everybody because I know you're getting eager and waiting for me to get to crafting so I'll just flip you around okay now I actually did get get a bit of light on the subject there I actually got a um this is the new kit that's coming in our new catalogue which is called Calligraphy Essentials. So this is a wonderful, if anyone's ever wanted to do um, calligraphy writing, this is awesome. The project kit gives you all of these sheets that you can practice doing the writing. Then it has the stamps that what you do is you just, with your your blends or your, your stamp and write markers, you just... Um, go with the flow but it teaches you how to actually do calligraphy writing so I think this is actually going to be a fun little project to be doing I might even do maybe a class or an online card class on this because I think this is absolutely awesome and as you can see in the kit you get all of these different card bases and you stamp the sentiment in the middle of the card base and your card is just about done so it makes, does it say how many it makes? It doesn't tell me on there how many it makes. So I'm assuming 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 4, 8, 12, 16, oh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, oh, um, 4 eighths. Who can do their times table? Wow. Or is that envelopes? I'm not sure. But anyway, I think it's an awesome kit. So um, anything that I use in my videos are available um, through my online store. So um, if there's something that you really like, the Share What You Love bundle is awesome. And at the moment, um, I'm giving away a free online card class if you order any of the Share What You Love bundles during the month of May from me through my online store and thank you everybody for the orders that I've received in the last two weeks it has been absolutely awesome and I know a lot of people are making wonderful use of getting that share what you love bundle because it's absolutely gorgeous and I think it's going to be hey Kathy thanks for joining hey Lou thanks for watching can anyone tell me I just want to I just want to find out a little bit of info here can anyone tell me, it tells me that I have 14 people watching me live. Can anyone tell me if the number on their screen says 14 or whether it actually says more? Just type in the comments and tell me how many people. I just wanted to find out this because a lot of people, um, thanks for ca sharing, Kathy. 
Um, a lot of people are saying um, that I had so many more people on to what I think I have. So um, I'd love to know. Just up near the, the red live button, it'll, it'll show you a little eye symbol and it will show you a number. Can someone type in what number they're seeing as far as people that are viewing? Hey, Karen, thanks for joining. Yours says 14. Rita says 15. Audrey says 14. Okay, no, that's okay because it's obviously, um, okay, that's good. It's showing 14 on mine. I just wanted to know whether those numbers were right. Okay, thank you, everyone. Thanks for letting me know that. Okay, so um, Project Kit Calligraphy Essentials works really well with our blends and also um, our um, stamp and write markers. So um, you can stamp the word in the color of your marker and then use your marker to fill it in or stamp the word in a lighter color than your marker and then fill it in so um, I think it will be a wonderful I'll probably do maybe a video on that too so the one thing that I think that you definitely are oh, the springtime foils was the um the framelets that I said that I didn't get so the springtime foils actually goes with our lovely abstract impressions stamp set and this is in a bundle. You can purchase this in a bundle um, um, and get 10%, save 10%, or you can purchase them separately. But as I said, I actually had some free stamp sets that I was, um, that it was, um, thanks everyone for showing me the numbers. Thank you for that. Um, okay, so um, I ordered it because I had a free stamp set that I could claim and then I forgot to order the framelits. But now I've got the framelits, so I'm doing a fun, fun card with this beautiful, intricate framelit today. So you're gonna, going to enjoy that. So I'll just get started now on the first card that I'm going to do. And I'll bring in the card that I'm going to do. This is the first card that I've decided to do. Now this is using these Big Shot embossing mats. So what it's actually done now is Stamping Up have, have now created a lot of, a few demonstrators from overseas I noticed before these embossing mats came out started embossing with all of our framelits. So even the butterfly there, we could use the butterfly. Um, actually we might do that as something a bit different on this one. I might do that. I might use the big butterfly. Yeah, we'll do that. Okay, so the framelit that I've used to do this one is out of our stained glass thinlet. So I'll just show you the stained glass thinlet. So what it's saying is we are now able to emboss. So I used, for this shape here, I used this framelit here. To get it and then I use some sponge daubers to um, sponge the color so um, yeah they are beautiful framelits aren't they Lindell Lindell yeah um, absolutely gorgeous so I've used the half circle here on this one but I'm actually going to use the butterfly on this card so I'm going to use the same colors but I'm actually going to use the butterfly and show you actually how it works so for this card I've used crumb cake as my base, so I'll just fold my base in half, ready to go, so that when we've got everything all together, we can pop it onto our base. And I always burnish with my bone folder to make sure I get a good fold. So I'll just pop that aside now. Now, I've got a bit of basic black that's going to layer in behind my layer, just to make that layer on the front pop. And I've also got the same for inside. I've got some Whisper White and some Basic Black. I then have a spare piece of um, Whisper White for my sentiment and for my butterfly. So first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to concentrate on the one piece of Whisper White. And I'm going to bring in my Big Shot. Now, it's really important that you get these layers right. To make this happen okay so in your embossing mats what you actually get is a plate which they call what do they call that they call that where am I um, 
Okay, so it shows you here on your sheet, it shows you the standard sandwich, then it says the cut and emboss sandwich, and then it says the emboss only. So the emboss only is what we're, we're actually going to do. So it says number seven is the Big Shop platform. So it's our basic platform. And that is without the thin die adapter. So it's just our standard platform. Okay, that's what we're going to start with. And then it says that we have our standard cutting pad, which is that. Then we have our framelit, which is with the cutting side facing up. Okay, so the blade side facing up. Then we have our cardstock. So I'm just going to place this butterfly how I want it. Because I want to get like a really good image on this sheet of cardstock. Okay, so you place your cardstock over the top. So I'm actually going to have a butterfly coming. How am I going to do this? Butterfly going that way. That's what we want. Okay, so we've got the butterfly. And then there's two thicknesses in these rubber mats. Now I actually did it just with, um, what have we got? Um, single sheet of paper. And was the thin blue mat. So that's this one here. So it's a thin rubber mat. Sorry, I've just lost everybody on Facebook here. Please bear with me while I get you back up on my laptop once again. There we are. Okay, so I can see what's going on. Okay, so we've got base plate, cutting pad, our white, whisper white cardstock with the framelit with the cutting side up. We're then going to put our blue rubber mat on. And then the last bit is this white embossing pad that we have. Okay. And then we're just going to run that through. Now this is where you see the absolute fun happen. You wait until you see the embossing that we have now with our butterfly on our white piece of cardstock. There we have a beautiful butterfly embossed on our white piece of cardstock. Hasn't cut through, okay? So I think this is absolutely wonderful what we can do. So now I'm actually going to place that, I think I'm going to place it like that so we have another butterfly happening like that. So I'm just going to place that down like that, placing my blue mat over the top. Hopefully that didn't move. No, it's all good. Blue mat over the top, white embossing pad over the top again and run it through wow it says I have 17 on today that's amazing that's the most I've ever had I think watching me at one time hey Anita hey Gwen thanks for joining okay and I'm just going to do another one just down here on the base. Um, we might do him that way. Okay, so I'm turning that over so I get the cutting blade coming up. Popping my blue mat over the top. And then popping the white embossing pad over the top of that again. So as you can see, this is allowing us to emboss with any framelit that we have. Any flower framelits, any... Um... Hey Anita, thanks for joining. 
any butterfly framelits, absolutely any framelits that we have, we can emboss with. So um, I know a lot of people were like, what in the world are these embossing mats? And I know if, you, if you're one of my customers and you've, you've received your new catalogue in the mail, um, I know that you were probably all thinking, how in the world do these embossing mats work? Well, there you go. I've just showed you exactly how they can work. Um, and so it is pretty simple and pretty straightforward. So does anyone have any questions with that embossing mat? I'll just wait for the delay and see if anyone types a question in. Karen Williams says, why do you need the blue mat? The blue mat is like a rubber mat. So it allows the dye to push up into your cardstock, but it, um, it makes sure the rubber has a bit of give, so it makes sure that it actually doesn't cut through your cardstock. So um, there is another grey mat, and the grey mat is for when you cut and emboss at the same time. So the grey mat is that you actually leave your... Um, piece of cardstock cut out in your framelit and then you can actually emboss while it's still in the framelit. So some of the framelits actually have um, some markings and they emboss a lot nicer if you run them through. Um, and, and we've been doing that for years, years and years ago. We've been embossing with our framelits um, when you leave the cardstock in the framelit and then you run it through the embossing. It's better than embossing folders. Honestly, Audrey, what it has actually done is it's changed our way of crafting because now any framelits that we have we can now emboss onto a sheet of cardstock so I think it's a brilliant idea I think it's a wonderful invention that Stamping Up have come up with um, a lot of people were using silicon mats doing it and taking out one of the cutting pads and taking out the thin die adapter so um, I just think it's an awesome way of um, yeah trying out some some new um, shapes and things with your embossing. So now I'm actually going to bring in some different colours here and I'm actually, hey Mandy, thanks for joining. So I'm going to use Blackberry Bliss. I'm also going to use Merry Merlot and I'm going to use our new Petal Pink. So I'm using um, three of the new colours to colour this beautiful butterfly. And I'm just going to, with my, and as you can see with our new ink pads, we have the colours that we can, we have the little swatch here that you can, um, I'll bring them down a little bit, that you can see the colour that you're using, which is fantastic. So I'm actually going to start off with the darkest one. And I'm just going to use the, um, I'll grab a scrap piece of paper so I can dob off. Um... So I'm just going to use the Blackberry Bliss on the body of our butterflies. So just um, popping your dauber in to your ink pad. Okay, and um, I like to dob it off a little bit first before I do the colouring just to um, get a lot of the excess heavy colouring off. So now I'm going to go to the Merry Merlot. Now this is a colour that's like um, red wine. Um, so, hey Mandy, I'm not sure whether I said hello to you. Thanks for joining. Okay, so this is the Merry Merlot. So I'm just going to come out along the wings with the Merry Merlot. Sometimes these daubers you can you can go a long way better get this underneath me so I don't get it all over my counter. You can go a long way with the daubers with colour still in them. But the beautiful embossing effect, it's a little bit like a resistance technique. As you can see, the, the butterfly is now appearing, which is absolutely wonderful. Now I'm just going to grab a lighter one again for my, what was it called? Petal Pink. This is the new pink. And this is quite a, um, it's actually like a yellowy, goldy pink. So 
I'm just going through now and just colouring the rest of the wings. I was sitting here on the weekend thinking, what can I do for my Facebook Live? And then I thought to myself, I love this, the idea of these embossing um, pads. So I was like, oh my God, I need to show everybody how these embossing pads work. So as you can see, because you've got the embossed effect, you can see with the darker colours, it gives you more like a resist effect. You can see um, on the debossed parts of the butterfly, you can see the white intricate um, markings. And on the, um, the raised embossed parts is what picks up your ink. So I think it's a fantastic um, way of um, embossing and popping a bit of colour on. So now I'm just going to, with the remainder of the, the petal pink that I have left on my dauber, I'm just going to add a little bit of colour just to that background. Okay, so I'm going to bring in my dark one again. And now I'm actually going to, um, with my Blackberry Bliss, I'm going to go over and do a bit of sponging around the edges. And this is just to grab a little bit of um, extra colour happening for my layer. I get so carried away that I forget to look at the comments. Hey Jenny, thanks for joining. Okay, so there you have, I mean they're two totally different looks, but um, we've got the butterfly and we've also got the stained glass framelit. So um, beautiful embossing technique. You got your blankie over your legs, Deborah. <laughs> You sound a little bit like me, and I'm thinking about if I'm going to go to hockey on Sunday and I'm going to be sitting up there and it's going to be cold in Toowoomba, should I be um, should I be packing the flan the um, polar fleece blanket so that I can pop it over my legs too? I don't care what people think about me when I'm out watching a game of sport, um, but yeah, I like to stay warm. Okay, so I'm also going to bring in. I need to stamp my butterfly and that's out of the painted glass stamp set so I just grab the butterfly um, and the, the, this stamp set has framelits to cut out the butterfly as well so I thought that was a, a nice cute little additive to um, you think I should Deborah? I think I should too I'm thinking it's probably going to be a thing. Okay, so I'm just going to stamp up my butterfly. And I'm using Memento Black Ink for my butterfly. Now, instead of re-inking my daubers, I'm just going to use um, what ink I have. Hey, Angie, thanks for joining. Okay, I'm just going to use the ink that I have left on my dauber just to get a bit of colour happening on the butterfly. And the pale one. Just to get a bit of colour on the butterfly. Thanks for sharing, Mandy. Thanks for joining me, Angie. I hope you're enjoying what you, you're seeing. Okay, so now I'm going to grab my stained glass framelits as you can see there's a butterfly framelit here and that's going to fit over my butterfly so i'll just bring in my big shot again now when i'm doing pre-stamped images i like to use my magnetic platform so i'll just grab that my cutting pad and I pop 
apologize for my bad cutting pad that I'm about to put on here, but for the life of me, I can't find my other good one. So I'm just using one of my ones that really needs to be retired, but I seem to not want to give up these cutting pads. Okay, so I'm just popping my framelit over the top, popping my cutting pad on, and I'm going to cut out my butterfly. Yes, the magnetic platform. I was actually saying to a new customer of mine, she was like, do I need the magnetic platform? And I said, hey, Nilla, thanks for joining. I think you're new. I haven't seen you on before. Um, I, I said, it, it is a luxury, but it is a beautiful luxury, um, especially for when you've got your pre-stamped um, images and you want to cut out like that. You can use post-it notes, so if you don't have the magnetic platform, you can use post-it notes. They will work just as well. Um, but the magnetic platform just makes life so much easier when you can just pop them on and cut them out. I love, love, love my magnetic platform. So there we have a cute little butterfly. Okay, so to finish off this card now, what we need to do is I'm using these this sentiment out of the Rooted in Nature stamp set. I love this stamp set. The sentiments are absolutely beautiful. Hey Cheryl, thanks for joining. Yes, I agree Deborah. Easier than putting um, washi tape or, or post-it notes, that's for sure. Okay, so I'm taking the You Are Wonderful out of this stamp set. She's that one there. I love these huge, big, bold sentiments. I think they are absolutely wonderful. Hey, Joni, thanks for joining. Okay, so I'm just going to line that up on my acrylic block. And on this piece of white cardstock that I have, I'm going to use um, my Memento Black Ink. Okay, so I'm going to ink up my sentiment. That's okay, Joni, you've obviously been busy, aren't we all? That's what life seems to be these days. Okay, so I'm just going to stamp that down. Okay, and it's stamped really, really nice. I'm just going to leave that and pop that aside for a little bit um, just to make sure it dries so I don't smudge my black ink. Okay, now it's just a case of I'm going to, while I'm waiting for that to dry, I might layer up my layers. So I'm just going to, um, with my liquid Tombow, pop it on the back of this one and layer it up on my Whisper Black. Oh, sorry, my um, basic black. Getting my whisper white and my basic black mixed up. As I said, everything that I'm using in this video today can be purchased through my online store and I would love to earn your business. If you don't have a Stamping Up demonstrator in your area, I would love to help you out. And if you ever have any questions about stamping or using... Um, that stamps nice and clear. Um, the the sentiment, Angie, is that what you're saying? Yes, it is absolutely wonderful. Lovely bold sentiments. So now I'm going to with my triple banner punch. I'm actually going to flag the end of my sentiment. Will the liquid tombow with the liquid tombow? How long does it take to dry? Liquid tombow, Mandy, you will have. Um, a couple of seconds to be able to wiggle it around and move it. Now I'm using my triple banner punch just to flag the end of my sentiment there. Um, you'll have a couple of seconds, like three to five seconds. So you'll be able to move it around for that small amount of time. But it allows you, as you, as you can see, it allows you to get your um, layers absolutely perfect. Especially when you've got little small borders. Because... I've now decided to do um, a an eighth of an inch border all the way around. So I, I actually like quite small borders. So, okay. So now it's a case of I'm going to use some of the beautiful new 
velvet ribbon. This is absolutely gorgeous ribbon. It is so soft and so yummy. So I've actually just popped two strips of that underneath my sentiment. That's okay, Mandy, anytime. I'm happy to answer questions anytime. As I said, I'm here. And if you ever have a question, I'm happy to answer. And if I don't know the answer, I make it my business to find out the answer. Okay, so I've just cut two strips of um, my beautiful velvet ribbon. And it's rich razzleberry, this ribbon. It's absolutely gorgeous. So I'm actually just going to, with some fast fuse, I'm just going to pop some fast fuse just in the middle of my card. And I've got to be careful on that embossing because it just about tore it up there. Okay. And I'm just going to lay them underneath my sentiment. Just two strips of it. Yeah, the ribbon is beautiful, Audrey, isn't it? It's gorgeous. Okay, now with my sentiment, I'm just going to cut it at the right length to get it sitting nicely. So I'm just going to cut it off like that. I'm going to bring in some of my dimensionals. I'm going to pop dimensionals on the back of my basic black layer and layer that up on my crumb cake card base. So I hope everyone's enjoying my crafting this afternoon. I love to just jump on, craft, chat with people while I'm going. It's a wonderful way to spend the afternoon. My kids are at school. I'm home alone. I've done some business type of things this morning. And now this afternoon, I, it allows me time to craft, which is wonderful. So I'm just going to line that up on my crumb cake card base. Now with my sentiment, I'm going to pop my dimensionals on the top and on the very bottom of my sentiment so it will go, it'll straddle my Rich Razzleberry cardstock, uh, sorry, ribbon. And the other thing that I, you will notice that I've done on this card, I've got some of our beautiful... Um, gold um, metallic thread. So I'm just going to show you how to do that. Okay, so with my gold metallic thread, what I do, and a word of warning, I have a bit of sticky tape holding the end of my thread. If you do not have sticky tape on your thread, it will go absolutely everywhere. Hey Tanya, thanks for joining. I haven't chatted to you for so long. Okay, so what I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to wrap it around my fingers several times. I'm going to add another finger in and wrap it around. Okay, and then I'm going to grab it all in a bunch, just like so. Okay, and snip that off. Now, I like to put just a dob of fast fuse in the middle here so it doesn't matter that I do it on my velvet ribbon. And then what I do is I just stick it down into that fast fuse. Okay? And then if you have any ends, wrap your ends around, stick it into your fast fuse. There's my other end. Stick it into my fast fuse. Okay, so now I'm going to take the backings off my sentiment and then I'm just going to line my sentiment up like that now my little butterfly I'm just going to bend my little butterfly, bend its body so that its wings bend up. 
And then I'm going to pop my Tombow on the bottom part of the body if the Tombow wants to come out. Oh, Tombow doesn't want to come out. I'll grab another one. That one's better. And always with my Tombow, I pop it in a glass pointing with its point face down so that it um, it always runs to the end of your um okay so I'm just going to pop him up there on the corner of that and now some bling just to bling it up a little bit okay so I'm just going to take some diamantes and just with the points of my scissors, I'm just going to take two of, um, yeah, I'm just going to do the smaller ones today. So and I'm just going to pop it on the body of my butterfly. Like so. Just to give the butterfly a bit of bling. And we have some new, uh, where did that box go? Some new um, faceted dots. And these faceted dots are in beautiful colours, but they actually have the rich, the um, Blackberry Bliss, which is absolutely gorgeous. So I'm just going to pop some of them on my sentiment. And they're in different sizes. Okay. So there you have my first card using our beautiful embossing mats. So what are you thinking, ladies? Are you thinking these embossing mats are going to change your world when it comes to um, using your framelits? You can get so much more out of your framelits now. And um, embossing folders have never been very expensive, but it now changes every framelit that you own. Every thinlet, it now changes it into an embossing um, product as well. So I think that is absolutely awesome. Okay, so I'll pop those aside. I'll just clean up here a bit. Wow, I can't believe how many people I have on today. This is my best ever. At one stage there, I was up to 23 people watching, which is fantastic. So thank you, everybody, for watching and joining me. I so love the fact that you choose to um, spend your afternoon watching me craft. I hope you're crafting along with me. Thank you, Lendl. Um... So, Deborah, that, that opens your eyes a little bit about how the embossing um, mats work. Hey, Chrissy. Yes, she's got the nails the same colour of it. Yes. Can you tell us my favourite colour, Joni? <laughs> I had my nails done, or oh, maybe two weeks ago. Um, my lovely nail lady, Jess, she's awesome. And she actually said to me the other day, I love doing your nails, Donna. You're so adventurous. I absolutely love the fact that you do really, really different things with your nails. So I went in and I, I knew I wanted the colour. I, I was like, I definitely want the colour, but I want some bling. I definitely want some gold. I want some bling. You look forward to watching me, Margaret? Thank you. Um, okay, so the next card that I'm going to do is I'm going to use this wonderful framelit that goes with, um, where am I, my abstract impressions. This is the stamp set that I'm going to use. And I'm going to use the wonderful framelit that goes with it. And I'm going to do something a little bit different. So I've used the butterfly out of it. Now I'm actually going to use this beautiful intricate framelit. So as you can see, it's massive, absolutely massive. 
So my idea was, how am I going to do this and how am I going to make a card out of it? So I'm using Whisper White as my base. So I'm just going to fold my base so that I know that that is the base of my card. You so need to get this. <laughs> am I enabling people to buy more products? I think I am. Okay, so that's my base for my card. I've also got a layer um, of our beautiful new colour, which is called Mango Melody. I'm going to be using some Mango Melody. And I'm also going to be using some Poppy Parade. So this is going to be a bright, bright, fun colour card. Okay, so what I decided to do was I didn't want to just cut this intricate framelet out of plain white. I was like, mm, I think that's going to be a little bit boring. So what I decided to do was get an assortment of colours. So I decided to go with the Granny Apple Green. Um... Poppy Parade and the Mango Melody. Sorry, I'm just trying to think of what colours I did use. That is what I used, yes. Okay, so I'm just getting all those inks out ready to go. Okay, so what I decided to do was so that I could get a different um, look on this framelit and you can do it one of two ways. You can colour it like I'm about to colour it now, or you can colour it after you cut it out. I just think it's easy to do it beforehand because it's very intricate. So you've got to worry about whether when you go to try and sponge afterwards, whether you're going to tear your intricate die cut. So my idea was I thought I'm not going to tear it. I'm, I'm going to make sure that um, it cuts nicely. So what I did was I laid my framelit on and through the framelit you can see You can see where the big roses are you can see where the other size flowers are and the smaller flowers So my idea was I'm I'm going to color where I can see the flower. So I know that that's a flower there So I'm just going to move that and put a dob of color and move it back Okay, so then I looked and thought Here's another rose here, so I'm just going to, with my dauber, put another bit there, okay? And then I was like, there's another big rose up here, so I'm going to move it and pop some colour there. I wanted to do um, some poppy parade, so I decided there's some big peaky flowers, so I decided that they were going to be poppy parade. I actually did use a different colour, I just remember now, I used couple of colors for the flowers so there's three poppy parade flowers here okay so those three flowers there and I think that is oh no there's one up there and one up here okay so there I have all of those now you don't have to be that precise with how you do this um, I'm gonna do I might do some of the flirty flamingo, I think, as well. So the other smaller flowers, I'm going to use the flirty flamingo. Okay, so there's some smaller flowers up through here, just through here, which they will be covered. There's another lot of smaller flowers just here. So I'm going to pop some colour there. I really enjoyed doing this. It was so much fun. And there's some more flowers, one there and another one there. Okay. And then with my Granny Apple Green, I came through and just looked where the leaves were and popped a little bit of green just where the leaves were going to be. So there's some there. There's some over here. There's some more leaves around here. So as you can see, I'm not being really particular with where I'm popping the colour. A bit of green up through there. A bit of green happening out here. A bit of green happening up through there. 
Okay, a few more leaves happening down here and through here. And when you see this cut out, you'll understand how fun this was. Okay, so that's all I'm going to do. You'll come back later, Angie. No worries. You love the floaty flamingo? Yeah. Okay, so that's my colouring done. I'm just going to pop the ink pads away so I don't get any mess on me. And I'm just going to bring the big shot in and I'm going to run that through the big shot. And it is a fairly intricate die. Now I'm just going to use my magnetic platform for this one. But I do suggest running it through a few times because it is really intricate. So um, I would definitely um, run it through a few times to make sure that you cut it out properly. Okay, so I'm just going to line that up nicely where I think it needs to be, which is there. All quite good. So you can see I've got... Um, all of the flowers covered and it doesn't matter if we get some white happening as well um, I just think it was a fun way to do it as I said you could try and do it the other way but my um, how clever you're saying Gwen thank you um, you could try and do it the other way but my idea was um, I was so scared of it being so intricate that I didn't want it um, to tear while I was trying to sponge it. I, I, I would say that you could probably daub it on and it would look okay. Um, now I'm actually going to take that out. I think it's cut. Yeah, it has cut out beautifully. Look at this. How lovely is this? Now I'll bring in my, my dye brush and... Um, Clean that out. She says as she tries to find her little foam pad that goes with the dye brush. I had it. Anyway. Oh, there it is. It's underneath my stamp set. Okay, so I'm just going to bring in my foam mat and carefully run the dye brush over to get those little pieces out. But I think that's a quick, easy way of colouring it and getting a really nice colour effect. It is pretty, isn't it, Megan? <laughs> Thanks for joining me, Megan. Okay, so there you have it. Quick, easy. So now I decided what I was going to do is I'm going to bring in the stamp set. Now I'm going to use these flowers out of the stamp set. And I need a bit of scrap paper so that I don't get colour all over the place. I'm going to do a bit of tone on tone stamping here. It is a stunning die, isn't it, Sue? I think it is too. It's beautiful. As soon as I seen it, I was like, that is a must have. I'm, I'm definitely going to have to have that. And, um,. I can't, cannot believe I forgot to order it. So I'm going to bring in the Mango Melody. I've got Mango Melody as my, my base here, as my layer. But what I actually want to do, I want to stamp off and then stamp on. So it's a cluster of flowers. And this is just to get a little bit of interest happening on the base of my cardstock to take that plain, stark look off it. You will begin to realise that I cannot stand plain cardstock as a layer. I like to have some um, interest happening. So all this is doing is adding a little bit, bit of texture behind everything that I'm going to do. Because I didn't want to take away from how beautiful this looks. But I, I wanted to have a layer that had a bit of interest for my card. Okay, so as you can see, this is starting to come together. And I decided that 
I popped that on like that and I looked at that and thought that's nice but how nice is it when you pop a little bit of color underneath so it just adds a little bit more um, oomph to your card so I decided that I would do that and I'm also up in my top corner up here I'm actually going to stamp one of the sentiments out of here now it says there's so much to love about you or kindness changes everything I think kindness changes everything is lovely so I think oh I had them out down here sorry I had it out for my next project which is that one there okay so I'll pop that onto a block on that one and I think I'm going to I'm I'm actually going to bring in my stamping mat because I want this to stamp nicely so I'm just bringing in my pierce mat now the reason why I use a pierce mat is to um, make sure that I get a nice impression I'm using a photopolymer stamp so because it's a photopolymer stamp you'll find that to get a really nice impression um, in, because it doesn't have the sponge that our clear rubber stamps have, I just use a, a piercing mat or a mouse mat just to give a little bit of give in your stamp so that you get a, a nicer stamped sentiment. Get it up the right way could help. Okay, so I'm just going to pop that right up in the top corner. Thank you, Lindell. Okay, so kindness changes everything. So now I'm just going to pop the card together. Take that out of the way. So, the first thing I want to do is pop my layer on to my white cardstock. So I'm going to use my Tombow once again because it gives me that wiggle room. Just going to be careful not to touch that sentiment so I don't smudge it. I'm going to layer that up onto my white card base. Okay. And then I want to pop this poppy parade just across there. These colors, the new colors, are so so yummy they are so bright and so yummy the color palette is absolutely gorgeous as I said I did spend the weekend putting together all of my colors and getting everything just right so now on the back of this you could have chosen to use our adhesive sheets I just pop a little bit of glue on the thick pieces that you can see just a little dob you don't need a lot you could use the fine tip glue pen if you choose to use the fine tip glue pen I have a few issues with the fine tip glue pen it doesn't seem to like me very much okay so just a few dots just to be able to line that up and get it to stick on to the front of the card like so and I think we probably need a little bit of bling as well thank you for the hearts so I'm just going to pop some of my diamantes once again I'm fine where I put my scissors and I think just in the middles of the flowers I want to pop some diamantes so I want to pop nice big one there another nice big one in there and some little ones how cute is this
Okay, that is just too cute, I think. Absolutely love, love, love this beautiful framelit. You love the card, Cheryl. Thank you. Bling is always best. I agree, Gwen. You cannot make a card without bling. Bling definitely finishes it off. But I think you can see beautiful, intricate die. Absolutely gorgeous. Um, I think you can do so many more things with it too. You could actually trim this apart and use pieces out of it. Like you could trim these leaves and this flower, that bunch of flowers, and pop it as a as a flower up on a sentiment. Um, you could you could trim little flowers out. You could actually do 3D flowers. There is a flower that is in the framelit as well um, that you could pop up to to get a bit of a 3D look. So you've got another little flower as well. So um, that would be handy to give you some 3D look um, on your project as well. Thank you, Rita. Okay, so the last and final card that I'm going to do today is the impossible card. Now, has everybody heard about the impossible card? Now, bear with me because I haven't, I've made a template, but I haven't actually made an impossible card before. But I have thought about it and I did um, organize lots of things today to um, to be able to try and bring you one of these impossible cards so what I've done is I've made a template so the template um, I don't know whether you've you've seen these impossible cards are cards that sit like so I don't know whether you can see that so it pops up it sits like it's got legs um, and there's such a a, a really quirky way of making a card. So I decided that I would use our new paper pack, which this is our new paper pack that will be in our new annual catalog starting on the 1st of June. It's called Garden Impressions and there's some beautiful, lovely flowered patterns in this set. So this is my first attempt, so bear with me and hopefully we will get this right. So you made one the other day easier. It is easier, isn't it, Rita? I, I was actually quite surprised. I think the main thing is to get your templates, and once you've got your templates, keep it as a template, and then you will be fine. Okay, so what I did, how you cut the base here, I've, I've done a 6x4 base, okay? So I've cut out a base 6x4, and I decided to do it in our um, Flirty Flamingo. Seen, um, we have this beautiful color to play with and you need some designer series paper that doesn't go any specific way you could use the one on the back there the one I'm, I've chosen to use this flowery one on the front you've done some Christmas cards Lindell yeah um, okay so I have my piece of cardstock so how we cut the base of the cardstock so we've got it six by four I'm going to bring in my scoring tool. Okay. And the first thing we do is on the short side, because it's four inches wide, we're going to go halfway. So we're going to score a line at halfway, which is two inches. Okay. And then we're going to turn it this way. Now we've got it six inches long. So halfway of six inches is three inches. So we're going to do a score line at three inches. We're then going to turn it around and on this side. So that score line only goes to the halfway score mark. Okay. And we're going to turn it around to the other long side. We're going to come in one and a quarter inches and make a score line. We're also going to come from this end one and a quarter inches. So it comes to four and three quarters and a score line. So those score lines only go down to the halfway. So we've got one and a quarter inches here, one and a quarter inches here, which comes into four and three quarters. And we've got half, which is three inches. Okay. And that's the simple part of um, the base. So now with that base, what we do is we cut 
up to our center score line so we cut on this bottom one where the one and a quarter inch is we cut it up to the halfway score line we cut this one up to the halfway score line as well we turn it around and we cut the halfway mark up to the score line as well okay now that's the base of your card now the way this card works is you flip this one over and that's your card that's your impossible card there it goes so I'll do that slowly again all you do is you turn one side that way and that is your card and then I'm going to decorate to find the template here what I've actually done is I've measured how wide this section is if you can imagine that that we've got an imaginary line coming up here and this is a rectangle okay so I've measured across here I've taken off my border that I want and I've cut a square piece just like this okay so then what I actually did was I cut it to the right length this piece here I cut it to the right length but it had this square in it okay so I cut it to the right length what I needed it to be and I put a mark where my score line was there and a mark where my score line was there okay I took it away I drew a line like that I then cut it with my scissors cut up cut to the score line cut to the score line and cut that that piece out and then that gives me a template to now cut my designer series paper okay so what I'm going to do is and I've, I've said that I need it this way up so how I'm going to cut my designer series paper because it's going to fit on here and it's also going to turn around and it's going to fit on here this is why you need paper that it doesn't matter which way it goes okay so this cardstock the designer series paper is the right width all I've got to do is cut it here cut it here okay I'm gonna cut that through okay and then cut it straight up here and I'm done for that piece okay so that gives me my layer for here so now this piece I need to cut it again so I'm going to line it up I'm going to cut it across here to do it a bit easier this time across there straight up here so once you've got your templates made just pop them in your drawer and then you've always got them okay and that and that is a piece for up there okay and those are scraps that you can use at another time so always keep your template somewhere handy your measurements and instructions are way better than the ones I used we'll be using yours in future was easy before but it be a doodle now thanks no worries Rita okay so what I've actually done then is I've measured this rectangle that I have here and I've measured myself a nice whisper white layer there I've also got a little bit that I'm actually going to pop on here with a bit of um, whisper white as well so this is going to hold it together so it's going to stop it from um, moving and being out of square okay so I'm going to stamp on these bits so I decided what I was going to do is on these bits I've got one sentiment here and that is out of the stamp set I decided I was going to do kindness changes everything on my large one so I think I'm actually going to do that in um, I might do it in blueberry bushel it's a nice bright blue so I'm going to stamp the sentiment um, kindness changes everything so I'm going to ink that up in my blueberry bushel I'm also going to bring in 
my pierce mat once again so I get a really nice stamped image. Okay, so I'm going to line that up and stamp that down. Okay, and I'm going to take the other one that says, if flowers were hugs, I'd send you a thousand, which I think that was a lovely sentiment. And it will just fit onto this strip here. So I thought that was fantastic. Okay. Don't you love that blueberry bushel? Look how lovely that is. Okay, I might... I've got a strip of this designer series paper that was left off one of the edges. So I think I'm actually going to glue that on. And I think I'm going to glue some pieces if I've got enough. I'm going to glue some pieces going down that way as well. So I'm just going to bring out my Tombow. So I'm just going to glue a piece down the edge of this one. As I said, ladies, I use my scrap pieces all the time. So this is a great, wonderful way to use your scrap pieces. Okay, so I've got a lovely little strip on that one. And then I'm going to do a strip across the bottom of this one as well. Just like so. And that then takes the plain look off my um, sentiment labels. Now, this one here, I'm going to pop up on my base of Flirty Flamingo. Now, I'm also doing a paper share as well for the new catalogue. So, if you're interested in um, my paper share, I've actually got... Um, your wish list, Anita, your wish list is getting bigger and bigger with every live demo I do. I am so sorry, Anita, but you know what? That is my job, is to show you all the beautiful products that we've got. And I can tell you my wish list never gets any smaller, Anita. I am constantly, constantly waiting for the next time to, to um, purchase my next order. Okay, so that on there as my label. So I'm just going to stick my DSP onto the base now with some Tombow. And Tombow is awesome for this, so you can get it all lined up exactly where you need it to be on your base. And I've got a lovely little border around the edges. So there. I'm just going to show you um, a trick of how to level this up with our other label. Okay, so that one just on there. So as you can see from the template, they fit beautifully because you've made your template. And it's all cut evenly, like so. Okay, now, with some of your grid paper, which do I have my grid paper here? I don't, but that's okay. I'll just use my cutter. We'll do the same job. Okay. Normally, I would use my grid paper, but... Believe it or not, my grid paper is actually out in the other room. So now I'm going to pop this on. As you can see, I'll do it here. As you can see, this one here 
is not lined up it's actually a little bit screwy if it needs to be pulled down and around to make it nice and square you need to keep it square so it will go into your envelopes the way you want it to go so I'm actually going to pop some dimensionals on the back of this because I thought I might like it popped up a little bit just for a little extra dimension now I need to pop the dimensionals right on the edge of my sentiment to make sure I am getting it right over onto the edge because I don't have a lot of room to play with. So I'm lining the straight edge of my dimensional up with the edge of my sentiment. Chrissy, you've just ordered Tombow. Okay. Joni, does it ever make you wonder why they make two-sided paper when one side gets lost? Well, the thing is, Joni, at least with this DSP, I'm trying to think of how many... What did I do with it? You get quite a few sheets of it, so you get to use the other sides. Okay, so you get... You get... Three, four sheets of each so you've got two of each design that you can use sometimes you'll find that there'll be a sheet of designer series paper you like one side and you won't like the other but when you like both sides yes it does get a little bit difficult and in those times is when you need to make the decision of um, which one sorry I took the dimensional off that and I didn't mean to I need to put that back on okay so I'm going to take the dimensionals off the left side so I can get it nice and straight onto my card so I'm going to line it up with the grid there on the base and I want to line it up that I get my sentiment really nice and straight okay so and it's just going to sit on the edge okay so that one's going to be good and then what I need to do is I need to take the dimensional backings off this one and I'm going to line it up and make sure it's lined up nice and straight before I pop my dimensionals down. Okay. So I'm going to line this up here. I'm going to hold this up. I'm going to line this one nice and straight with the line. And then I'm going to pop my sentiment down. Like so. And then it gives you the nice squared up look. Okay. So there you have... The impossible card and as you can see ladies it is not that impossible it is actually quite easy to do so um, I was very surprised at how easy it was to do it so I'll just bring in those cards that I've made and I'm going to choose a winner today so I, I'd love people to comment so I'm going to pick a random person out of the comments today to win, um, where did my other card go? This one. Okay. So I'm going to do a lucky winner today that will win one of my handmade cards that I've made today. So please pop a comment in to the comments. Um, and thank you all so much because you have been so wonderful today. As I said, once again, please share my video and type shared in the comments. So that I know that you have shared to go into the draw to win the Party Pandas stamp set. So I will be drawing the Party Pandas stamp set at the end of this month. So the last day of this month I will jump on and do a live video and draw the lucky winner. You must live in Australia to be able to win. Um, thanks Carmel. To be able to win, be eligible to win the stamp set you must live in Australia. And I will pick um, a random person today that I will send one of my beautiful cards to okay so I'm randomly going to just grab someone's name okay so Megan Megan Lecomu do you live in Australia Megan please comment and let me know I'm going to write that down on one of my sticky notes if I can find them can't find my sticky note at the moment so Megan Lecomu you are the winner of a 
a beautiful card today. So Megan Lee Comu. So please, Megan, um, if you live in Australia, can you please um, personal message me your address and I would be happy to send out a card for you. So congratulations, you are the winner of, you're in Brisbane. Thank you, Megan. So which card would you like, Megan? Can you please choose which card you would like me to send you in the post? And if we're lucky, I may pick another winner this afternoon to win a beautiful card as well. So um, just let me know which card you wanted. I've got left, right, top and bottom. So just tell me left, right, top or bottom. Thanks. Congratulations, Megan. Well done. Um, okay, and I'm going to draw another one. So um, still waiting to find out which card you want, Megan. Okay, I'm going to draw another one. Let me see who I can pick. I'm randomly going to pop my finger on to... Okay. The next winner is Anne Linnett. L-I-N-N-E-T-T. -T. So Anne, if you're still on, can you please let me know um, which card you would like that's okay, Megan. Um, let me know. Any card or I'll randomly just pick a card for you. Anne Linnett, congratulations. You are the next winner of a beautiful handmade card. So Anne, if you're still on, um, please let me know. Karen's saying the bottom card. This one here, Karen, it's beautiful, isn't it? Absolutely gorgeous. Um, so we have two winners. We have Megan Lacomu and Anne Linnett. So Anne, if you could please um, let me know your home address. And Megan, if you can let me know your home address. Just personal message me and I will pop them in the mail for you. So thank you everyone for watching and thank you for, for lasting for the full time that we have been um, on together. And I hope you enjoyed crafting with me this afternoon. Um, congratulations to the two winners, Megan Lacomu and Anne Lynette for winning the beautiful Megan can I please have the stained glass window card with the butterfly on it thank you no problem Megan I will pop your name on that one thank you very much um, and and Lynette if you can personal message me and let me know which card you are wanting um, I'll pop them in the post for you so thank you everybody have a wonderful afternoon I hope you enjoyed crafting with me and please feel free as I said, to share my videos and like my videos. If you're watching this back on YouTube later on, please feel free to share it on YouTube. If you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, please subscribe and click the bell. So the bell notifications to let um, you know when I've posted a new video. So thank you all for watching and until next time, have a great day. Bye for now.